Good evening, everybody. This is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And my guest is Denise Duff, who played Michelle in uh, Subspecies 2 through 4, and also the latest um, Subspecies 5. How's it going? Hey, very good. You got all those numbers of sequels correct. (laughs) I know. I bet some people are probably mistaken. You go, wait, she was in one. No, Denise was not in part one. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Well, okay, we got that right. So um, I got a chance to talk to you briefly at Horror Hound, and that's where you guys did the uh, red carpet premiere of Subspecies 5, Blood Rise. So uh, how much fun did you have at the Horror Hound and Horror Hound Film Festival? Oh my gosh, on a scale of one to ten and seven. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it was fantastic. It was just so packed, which is really like phenomenal. That I mean, it seems like every couple of years, it uh, word gets out, horror is fun, go to a convention. And all the, the horrible rain did not scare people off. And to be able to premiere it there, I thought was super smart of Charlie and Ted to, you know, finish up the fine details. Plus, it's always great. You, you work better when you have um, something, at, you know, something to push you to finish something. And so I think that this really got them to, you know, wrap up the final score and color correcting because there's just no better fitting place than a great big horror convention. And, um, uh, yeah, the, to, to it, it was interesting because there are fans that hadn't seen the series or hadn't seen the finished product, and where mm-hmm. we had one of the actresses there who stars in the brand new one, and she felt so bad. She's like, "Why am I here?" She's from Serbia. Nobody has seen my film. I'm like, "Trust me, it's okay. Just wait. You know, it's going to air Saturday night, and on Sunday, people will be asking for your autograph. Don't you worry." And sure enough, on Sunday, they were just like all over her, all over all of us, because it really, it's such a beautiful, uh, fitting prequel to this this story. And I, I feel that you don't need to see the one through four for it to make sense. But obviously, if you have, you'll just gain a lot of extra pleasure in seeing certain relationships and, and where the director saw that the inception of a lot of these um, characters and why they act the way they act in the, the more current versions of it based on the, the beginnings and the background he addressed in part five. Yeah. When I was talking to Charles band um, who you were mentioning Stas- Stasa, who was there, um, she paid her own way to come to the States just to come to the convention for that premiere. Yeah, well, she she was already in New York, and um, was having a, which was great because there's a whole um, uh, the the not permit. What is it? Your green card? Not visa, green, um, yeah, the visa passport. Visa. Yeah, visa. Traveling yeah, traveling visas. <laughs> yeah. And um, so fortunately, she had already done that work for her family trip in New York, so she was so nearby, mm-hmm. and it was. Um, you know, it worked out. They were able to, you know, get her a nice hotel room and a little bit of per diem, and um, but. She just, she was like, now, how do we dress? You know, she asked me the day before. I said, you know, it's a horror convention. I mean, I wouldn't wear blue jeans and a black t-shirt, but you could. You know, I'm just like letting you know, you could do a golden bustier or you could do blue jeans and a black t-shirt. Um, this isn't like a, a Hollywood um, Brothers Chinese theater type of red <laughs> These people, they're they're your people. You know, you don't got to dress up for them, but if you want to, go for it. But just know they ain't kicking you out of bed if you don't. <laughs> hey, she was looking fabulous in that outfit she was wearing Saturday night before the film. I mean, she was stunning. Yeah, she's a beauty. Now, um, let's talk. You know, let's talk about the species five. It's been uh, thirty years since the original when you played Michelle. And it's like years later, we're finally getting a part five because that took a very long time. And um, the thing I loved about it was uh, in the film, it, it, it was like some beautiful cin- uh, uh, cinematography shots, which I liked. It was like very breathtaking. The music score was perfect. 
And um, I thought, you know, uh, Tom really uh, nailed nailed this film, Mr. Prequel, where we get a chance to find out where Radu came from, you know, his, you know, birthright and what happens, you know, from, you know, he was taken away from birth and then, you know, he finds out the whole true self and that's when he goes mad. <laughs> that's when he goes mad. Poor thing. He was very... He, he had a lot of madness to deal with in this one, a lot of madness and a, and a lot of sadness. And the director, Ted Nicolau, um, who's also the writer, yes, he really um, wanted to create this film around the concept of family and Radu's quest for that yes. and, and finding family, finding companionship and, you know, the the true meaning of a fledgling, you know, is someone who is there with you, who's there for you. Um, you drink their blood, they drink yours, you know, it's standard family fare. Why not? That's, and, that's typical vampire life. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Just another day in the, the, the cemetery. So, you know, I certainly uh, enjoyed the fact that when I read the script, I read the script 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. That's when it was written. By now, I think 17 years ago. And it was, you know, it had a lot more horses in it. And we were, in fact, I was riding a horse in in it originally, but the budget had to be scaled down a bit. So, um, so we got the horses for about three hours in the film, which is great. Like, just know that filmmakers, it's like, um, you want to get as much budget on the screen, but also know that you can get something that's super expensive, but just rent it for like half a day or rent it for an hour. I mean, I think a lot of filmmakers listening probably know that with celebrities, you can have a big celebrity in it, but you only had him for four hours, you know, <laughs> and um, and you can kind of sculpt your locations um, in that same way. And they really did put, uh, you know, the budget into um, getting the crew to these incredible locations where we would drive sometimes two, three hours um, to a mountainside you know, five equipment trucks, the wardrobe truck, the food truck, only to get out, get our wardrobe and makeup done, and then spend 20 minutes walking back and forth, taking Ted's direction. Now walk this way. Now walk that way. Okay, that's a wrap. Now we're going to drive three hours back. Just because that location, that vast mountain range during that time of the day was so needed for the film. And I really, I admire that because that's that's what you do for multi-million dollar budgeted films, not for something, not even a million. So hats off to Ted Nicolau and the production team and Red Productions um, that co-produced this with Full Moon and how they were able to pull that beauty off on the screen. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful scenery in the film too. And that must have been nice. You got to be there and really uh, breathtake it while you're uh, yeah. filming. Yeah, yeah. It's like we had just enough budget to go to all those places, but not quite the budget to sort of be remotely hidden away in big cushy trailers or big cushy hotel rooms. Like, you know, we're we're right out there. We're we're in there and we're with the locals and, and um I mean, but that's that's just the making of subspecies in general, from being in Romania in nineteen ninety three when Ceausescu had just been killed, um you know, taken down, like communism was just ending Mm -hmm. and that country was figuring out its, its freedom, its personality, you know, it it had been suppressed for so long. And here we were making this film out on their streets and and they could care less, you know, they didn't, they didn't know from film. They knew Michael Jackson, Elvis and Madonna. Like those were the, (laughs) those were the big celebrities back in 1994, Romania, you know, it was pre cell phone, pre social media. So the world was much smaller and, um, but we were able to just, you know, again, in Romania, um, really feel the, the darkness and, and medieval feeling of, um, you know, of Bucharest when we were filming there. And Serbia had a very similar feel, even though it's, you know, definitely a more modern time. We still went to remote places um, that I could feel the same torture as I did 30 years ago playing Michelle. Yeah. Since in this film, you don't play Michelle, you play Helena. Um, yes, I do. I play the pre-incarnated version of Michelle. How was, how was that for you playing the pre-reincarnation of uh, Michelle like that? How much fun did you have playing Helena? 
Oh gosh. I, I mean, <laughs> well, what did you think? Uh, like, uh, did you have any concept of how how my character might might be in a in a, uh, a pre incarnated version? Did it did it match something you had thought of? Were you surprised? I'm just curious as a fan because yeah. it's not released yet. It was only released to those who were there. So I'm I'm curious from your fan viewpoint. Well, um, I really liked it a little bit. I was a little bit confused. I was like, okay, uh, this is not Michelle. Uh, she's like Helena. And I, I kind of like it. I, I like the fresh take of it because since it's a prequel – and then I kind of caught caught on. It could have been like a uh, a relative from a far generation, or kind of like a reincarnation. That's the feeling I got. I felt like it was like a long lost a relative, like way back when, that was tied to uh, Michelle on the, on the bloodline. That's what I picked up. Oh, okay. Well, that I love that. I love how people can take it. You know, I mean, and in me and playing it. You know, I love the idea that that we're spiritual beings Mm -hmm. and we inhabit a meat body. You know, I'm Denise and I'm the spiritual being, but I inhabit this meat body. And that's what I take around to auditions and I slap it in a chair and sit down and shove it in the shower and I shower it. Um, But as a spirit, I go on. Right. And so I really like that idea that um, that Ted use that concept to have who is the the core of Mm -hmm. michelle slash helena yeah and um and and who might she have been uh 600 years earlier and she seemed to have been (laughs) um you know a a concubine of Mm ladislas who wound up being the mother of stefan right so now he's half human half half vampire yep and um, whereas, um, you know, Radu is the the son yeah. of um, of Ladislas, but he has a different mother. His mother is Circe, mm-hmm. the uh, the witch. Mm-hmm. So he's part demon, part vampire, and um, and just that whole wild creation. I, I think it was also kind of weird. I said I said it right after the premiere when all the audience was there. I said, was it a little weird that I played the mother of Stefan? <laughs> who 600 years later I wind up like dating and falling in love with. <laughs> and they were like, yes. and, um, but you know, again, it's like, it's just spirits going through mm-hmm. lifetime after lifetime. And sometimes we're lovers. Sometimes we're brothers. Sometimes we're mothers and friends and enemies. And, and, um, and, but that there's a connection there. And, and I thought that was really sweet. My connection with Stefan being my son, mm-hmm. um, you know, heck, I, I feel that with, you know, with, with my husband, you know, yeah. it's like I can love him as a lover, but when he does something so beautiful, I get yeah. pr- proud like a mom. And, and I really think that Ted did a great job. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it was a brave choice and, and a, and a choice that went with his decision to explore family in Radu and in Michelle and their crazy wild connection that the series, the original series started. Yeah. Um, I liked it. Ted, Ted, uh, made it really good. He gave it justice. I mean, uh, the film blew my mind and I was talking to some people at the festival who watched it too. And we were just blown away. I mean, he hit this into the ballpark. I mean, I, it just blew my mind. It was, it was so good. I mean, it, uh, it blew part four away for sure. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah and i was yeah, I mean, go on oh yeah i was listening to you i just finished my sentence <laughs> uh, i know i loved what you were saying um i um part four you know it it's cute it was interesting the doctor was weirdly wild um the concept of the blood transfusion, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. unique. Um, but yeah, it, that it, part five had nothing. Part five was all on its own. It was like a Game of Thrones meets, you know, <laughs> subspecies. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was great. I, I loved it. And I was glad I got to be the first to see it before anybody else. Because after they showed it at Whorehound, they also showed it at a Draft House Cinema, too. 
you know, right after Whore, Whorehound. Did you see it at Draft House? No, um, that's where oh, it was. it hasn't aired yet. Yeah, yeah it, it hasn't, hasn't aired. Yeah, but it's going there. Yeah. It's going to, yeah. Yeah, but I was glad to yeah. be part of that, and I was glad to be part of the audience because it was yeah. it was neat sitting with the audience and feeling what they were feeling. It was like, I mean, you can tell everybody was like really, you know, like getting into it and like certain scenes, and everybody was like, whoa, wow, you know, and... And um, so what was going through your mind when you were sitting with the audience watching it too, uh, seeing the d- different thoughts and feelings of of the film goers watching the film? I know part of me wishes that the lights were on so I could have seen everybody's reactions. Um, it was, uh, you know, I was in the very, very back yeah. row. And, um, uh, and I, I did, I love the quietness Um I, I love, I, you could hear people breathing. You could hear the a little gasp every now and then. Um, I, there was a, a fun chuckle at one point when, um, the brother and the sister are going into a, um, a little cavern yeah. and the guy with the lantern who, who's actually one of the executive producers, um, <laughs> he says, you know, uh, do not do not drink my wine or sleep with my daughter or whatever you know like I just, and I loved hearing the laugh um yeah it, it was so exciting and and you know we we almost weren't going to do a Q and a um honest and Kevin couldn't be there and mm-hmm. so there was something that had happened actually just before the screening so I was the only one there with Ted and Staja and um and so they had asked me, will you stay? And I'm like, well, heck yeah. Cause I'm Denise and I stay. <laughs> and, um, so when the lights went on and people were applauding, I was sitting in the back and I, and, but I, I just literally stood up and ran to the front of the, uh, the theater and, um, yeah. And just kind of started a little impromptu Q and a, and then Ted who had left came, was like, where's Denise? And they walked back in the theater and he's like, Oh, Denise is, Denise is doing the Q and a after all. And, um, and I'm, I'm so glad we did because, you know, as, as crazy as that had become and it, some things, technical things had happened and, and, and I'm bummed that honest and, and Kevin couldn't be there. Um, but there'll never be that first showing of that ever like you did get to see something that we have waited for well 30 years but technically 17 years to have on that screen and we have gone through do we do crowdfunding do we do do we lower the standards and and just kind of build weird sets you know um then the pandemic had happened and you know and and honest is getting older and 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 is in denmark and Um, there were just many things of like, is this going to happen? You know, like we weren't, we never were a, a theatrical release horror film. And that's something that, um, you know, back in the eighties and nineties, like that's how you got known. You had a theatrical release. And the fact that we have the kind of fan following that we have without ever having that, like just from a little bit, a little bit of cable in its early days, but from, blockbuster video you know from those vhs days and then you know as streaming came um it was just the the fact that they they that charlie band kept it on his channel and and just the the we have three generations of fans that come to my table now you know the the grandfather his son and and the sun (laughs) and you know so there'll be a 10 year old and a and a 30 year old and the 60 year old and you know part of me it horrifies me i'm like god am i that old um (laughs) but mostly it warms my fucking heart so much to know that this little thing that i auditioned for on sunset boulevard you know 30 and a half years ago that when i was with the william morris agency and i had just done you know, uh, an episode of Northern Exposure and Matlock and I was doing TV and I did an ivory soap commercial. And and then I get this audition for this horror film that I thought was going to be filmed like in North Hollywood only to get it and find out I'm going to Romania blew my mind. Um, and to, to go to my first autograph convention six months after it was released at the Hollywood Book and Poster Shop 
on Hollywood Boulevard. And Br- Brooke, Brink Stevens was there and a couple of other girls. There were like four other girls. And I thought, God, these, these are scream queens. I'm not a scream queen. And they're selling their autographs. And I'm like, I'm giving them away, right? I'm like, I, why are you getting money for these, right? Like, it was the weirdest thing. I, I didn't know that you that people buy your autograph, yeah. you know? And um, and then finally, one of the girls said, that's not a good example. You can't just give them away. It makes us look like a piece of shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it took all just how far this whole series, you know, has uh, that, that you can't kill a vampire moral of the story <laughs> exactly and you know charles band must have had a blast too about you know subspecies five and plus being at whorehound you can tell he was having one hell of a time yeah he was pretty happy he had a nice line of people you know he was he made himself very available to the fans it was really sweet yeah that's pretty good I, i'm excited to go on and uh speaking you know I was a teenager in the 90s when Full Moon was like real popular with all the subspecies films and Puppet Master. And like you said, um, I would rent them at the mom and pop stores before Blockbuster. You know, that's when they got all the, you know, direct to video uh, VHSs and stuff. And and then when Blockbuster came by, it kind of ruined the mom and pop experience. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So, um, when you're not like, uh, being in films, TV shows, and of course, you know, subspecies, what does Denise really enjoy? What's your passion? What do you enjoy when you're not behind, uh, in front of the camera? Oh, well, I mean, I also have a skincare business. Okay. So that, that I, I work on like 10 hours a day, seven days a week. It's called in your face skincare. Mm -hmm. And, um. Yes, yes, in your face skincare. <laughs> we have all sorts of all sorts of luscious organic natural treats so that you too can have the skin of a, uh, an eternal never aging vampire. <laughs> yes. I like that. I bet you probably sold some to Anders. <laughs> oh, he loves it. Oh, I don't sell it to him. I give it to him. He couldn't wait. In fact, that was one of the things he, he WhatsApped me about when he was getting on the plane to come out. He says, my jaw is empty because I'd given him one in September and, uh, and he used it all up. My jaw is empty. I hope to see you in Ohio soon with a full jar. <laughs> so, uh, yeah even ted i had to go into ted's hotel room to uh, store my suitcase for something and right there in his bathroom he had a jar of my in your face cream <laughs> so how did it feel you know to be back on the screen with anders i mean you guys always had that great you know chemistry yeah uh, it's he is he's such a volatile big-hearted treasure of a human um He's one of the finest actors on on camera anywhere. Um, you know, you he, there's such a character that he plays, and and I, I feel the true fans they they know him and they love him because um, because he is such a great actor. And um, but it may be limited to someone who might not be like a horror fan mm-hmm. because he's playing this sort of character. Um, but you have to be an amazing actor to make those bold choices human in a way to, to make a monster likable, regrettable, um, empathetic. You have to really have some great acting chops and he, he does, he won't say a single thing unless he really feels it. Like he and Ted would have yelling fights on the set because he wouldn't understand what he was saying, you know, didn't, didn't feel it was worded right. And he would just tear at Ted. Like, why am I, this doesn't make sense. Ted. <laughs> It's fucking ridiculous, you know? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, they wanted me to... I was helping do some behind-the-scene footage. and um, But whenever they would start going like that, I would stop filming. And then about two weeks into the shoot, they're like, no, 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 it's okay. You can get that, Ted was saying. And I'm like, all right, well... You know, I, I, I just didn't know... I didn't want to cross any lines, you know? But it is a big part of, you know, subspecies one through five is, you know, uh, Ted and, and honest together having it out, you know, and, um, you know, and crazy things like there was a scene in the film on, um, on my first work day where honest's fingers were not ready for his character. And, um, and the scene that we had to do 
was us lying on this bed and me striking this deal with him. I'm the queen at this point in the film. And, um, but, but honest, his hands weren't ready. So literally we had a lunch break and we thought, what are we going to do? Cause we have to shoot that scene, very tight schedule. And so Ted said, we're going to just have, we're going to have him laying down on a bed and we're just as um, the scene just before he drank from the yeah. bloodstone. So he was a little bit loopy. And so Ted decided instead of just having him like l- both of us laying on the bed, like, la, 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 yeah. I'll have him just hit just his head and me coming toward him. And he's, he's kind of paralyzed by the blood. So we don't need to see his hands. Um, and it wound up making a, a, a strong scene. He shot, he did one shot from above and then one straight on. Um, so, you know, just those like clever things, but again, um, honest had to, um, work with some of these props and, and, uh, the, uh, the appliances and sometimes they don't work well, you know, sometimes something, you know, bends or melts or comes off and, and he'll just blow up this fucking thing, you know, and he'll just have this tirade. And, um, but it's because he cares, he cares so much about making it look good and, and be believable, even though it's a, it's a monster movie. Um, especially this one, you you see his transformation from a man of the cloth, a man, a monk for the church, mm-hmm. and his heart that he has in it. He's got so much empathy. Um, he doesn't have to have his makeup on for half of the film, and that was a luxury for him to just be able to play a real regular man. I like that. I mean, it was a beautiful story. Um, so where can um, everybody find you on social media and, uh, you know, when they can get a chance to finally see Subspecies 5? Well, I'm, I'm pretty easy to get to, as you may know. Just Denise Duff, or Denise with a C. Denise Duff uh, Instagram, Denise Duff Facebook. I make it easy. No numbers needed. Unlike my films, which have many numbers at the end of them. I like that. That's awesome. Hey, thank you so much for coming out of your busy schedule to have fun with me tonight. My pleasure. Thank you for your great questions and for being there at Horror Hound on the premiere of this. And let's just hope that maybe we got one more film left in us, you know? Oh, fingers crossed. One more subspecies, that is. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much.